All right, welcome to the 20 Podcast brought to you by BeatSource. I'm your host, DJ Spider. DJ Spider. On today's show, we have an L.A. legend. I know, you know, you're originally from Seattle, but to me, you're an L.A. <laughs> legend. I grew up listening to all your stuff. He's an incredible DJ, a prolific producer, Grammy Award winner. Okay, give it up for that. Someone whose sound really transcends time and space. And I mean that because I've been listening to his beats for... I want to say what 20 30 years at yeah, this point man. and Crazy. they don't sound old you know like Thanks. even the older ones like they they are just they sound incredible you know and at all parts of your career it's just this evolution so um you know i say that your stuff transcends time and space and just kind of has no expiration date um also your drum game is unparalleled <laughs> it's insane when you go through his beats the amount of different drums and how ill they are and the drum patterns <laughs> yeah. and just what he uses and i just feel like his long career is a testament to like his endless curiosity and commitment to staying true to sounds that resonate with him and that are genuine to him and which you know shows other people how to have a long career you know stick true to what you think is dope and you'll go real far and uh you know that's not even mentioned who he's worked with 50 cent snoop dogg eminem kendrick lamar asap ferg remy ma big boy nas cypress hill jay-z clips that's just naming a few and that's not even from the world that i love you know from like <laughs> i was saying planet asia and yeah. like all these dope la <laughs> underground uh, groups yeah and legends yeah. um so also he's done amazing collabs with uh brands like native instruments serato big in the whole stems movement so we'll talk about that because that means a lot to djs and producers um i could go on forever but please make some noise for dj khalil let's go yes knocking down the mic <laughs> that's right so hopefully that gives you guys an idea yeah. you know of who we're talking to here um but yeah you know your career is just so incredible to me and the fact that you're also a real DJ, you know, and I think yeah. the fact that you're DJ Khalil, like yeah. you're known for your production, but you're also a dope DJ, you know, you, you're always putting scratches on the beats too, oh, yeah. which is just something yeah. I've always looked up to and, and admired. And um, yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's great yeah. to be here, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> incredible. So um, yeah, what, uh, you know, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just... Just working, man. I'm just, yeah. I'm just like, you know, just, just happy to be here. Happy to still be doing what I love. You know what right. I mean? Like, I, I really like. I, I feel like I, I've, I've started over. You know, like, even yeah. with the technology and all the things that we have access to now, I feel like it's like it's a whole new frontier. Right. And I'm starting over, and totally. I and like, and I feel like a kid in a candy store. Like, literally, yeah. just like, just, just trying to explore like what the possibilities are because now we have like. It's th they're endless, you right. know what I mean. So I'm, I'm really excited about just making music. Like my curiosity, like I love that you said that because that's like a big word for me. Like yeah. you know, it's like every day I'm like, man, I wonder if I could do this. Or right. I'm always asking other producers. Like I'm, you know, I've really over the pandemic, I call like all my heroes. You know what I mean? It had like in depth conversations. Yeah, it was just, you know, I had an incredible conversation with Kenny Dope, and it was probably wow. one of the most like life altering conversations really I've ever had yeah cause why he, what what stands out just, from that it was just where he comes from and like you know he was talking about you know when masters at work were you know at the top of their game and yeah and his approach to making music and how he got started and right and what i took from the conversation was like his sense of urgency like his sense of urgency for finishing records and like interesting and like if he and louis vega didn't feel something if they were working on something they would literally erase it and start over if they were like are you feeling this nah erase it and but they wow from start to finish would they would finish the records that night and he said that was because when he was working i think like in his parents basement or whatever the power would cut off so he had to like <laughs> you know what i mean he had yes. to get his stuff done before his stuff you know because once you lost it, it that was it back yeah. then it wasn't like you're on your computer saving stuff so, right right there's no auto you know, save ableton <laughs> yeah and just you know and just to see like all these guys even during the pandemic like digging deeper into their loves and like creating businesses out of it, like right. expanding their business. And like, I watched him do that, you know, with yeah. the 45s and you know what I mean? He, yeah. He was already doing it, but he, I feel like he went harder and, right. and, and, um, and it all started with the expansion that I did with native. I sent it to him and he, he was sending me beats back. Like, I'm like, Kenny dope is sending me beats. <laughs> like that's crazy. You know what I mean? So, so, crazy. so it's just, you know, 
talking to like these legends and really understanding like, you know, there's always something else to learn. You know right. what I mean? And I feel like, you know, Dr. Dre's my mentor. He's he's like my big brother and and I I'm I never stop learning from him right. ever. He's always dropping jewels. I mean, I think he's a testament to that as well. Someone yeah. that's endlessly curious, endlessly working and um just it, it just more about the journey yep. within it uh than what's going to happen before or after, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just work and you don't know what's about to happen. You don't. But that leads to all the magic and music is infinite. Yeah. So it's going to constantly be overlapping each other and new things are going to be coming out of it. And yep. um, yeah, that, you never know what you're going to stumble on. You know right. what I mean? It's like, it's, it's like, it's art, you know, it's art and you just never know that one thing you do could be the next song that could change the world. You right. know what I mean? Like we literally have that kind of power. I mean, yeah. it really, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, to have that at your fingertips every day and to have the technology and all these tools that we right. have, it's like, it just leads to better expression. To That's me. crazy. I also like how you said the sense of urgency because I think we have a habit of people have a habit of procrastinating, but also nowadays you're constantly on to the next new thing and you're yeah. being distracted all the time and having a sense of urgency to either finish something or throw away the thing you yeah. don't like yeah. one way or another is something good, you know, to keep in mind just from people making music or any sort of artistic expression. Yeah. I mean, I just think like all the greats, when I look at all the, all the greats that I look up to, yeah. that's what they had. DJ premier Pete, Rock. right. You know what I mean? When I hear yeah. them t talk about stories about their, you know, you know, I mean, I feel like they've never fallen off, but they've, you know, they've always been at their height, you yeah. know, but it's because of this like relentless pursuit that's of true. just excellence, you know what right. I mean? And they don't stop. They just don't. And that's yeah. how Dre is. Dre is working every day. He doesn't have to do anything. He's proven <laughs> everything. Yeah. He's made all the money. Like what else does he have to do? And, but I see him outwork everybody still. That's He's crazy. still outworking everybody. So that's inspiring for me, you know yeah. what I mean, as a producer and, you know, and just getting older in this game. It's like, man, if he's still doing it, I got to keep working. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's such a lesson. That's crazy. And I think that, like I was saying before, you know, your career, I've heard the evolution in your beats. You know what I mean? And I remember hearing beats where I'm, like, trying to figure out the sample and, like, what break he used and the sample and he's scratching that acapella or whatever it is. Yeah. And that's in the 90s. And... As it grew, I, you know, you're doing these G unit beats or 50 cent beats. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, he's definitely playing something on there. I'm yeah. like, it sounds different. It's yeah. cleaner and there's something going on, you know, and then I yeah. would read an interview or whatever. And you talk about like, okay, I'm doing this. And then you're, t then you get to the point where you're recreating the samples in a way. Right. Yep. Or, yeah. So it's even sampling. beyond the playing over a sample thing into yep. like, I'm going to create the sample and yep. even trick producers to think I'm sampling something that's right and then resampling myself and it's like then you get to that point then now I don't even you know probably you've been through a few more evolutions since that but even now with the stems it's almost like you can go back to the beginning resample the things you were exactly. sampling again exactly. in a whole new way in a whole new way it's that's crazy. exactly what it is it's like, like this crazy 30 year circle right it's, it's crazy that's why I'm like I'm I'm, I'm kicking myself because I didn't really like in terms of the digging, like, you know, yeah. when I started making my own samples, I wasn't digging as much, you know right, what I mean? Right. Whereas like, I feel like I would have way more of an arsenal if I had, you know, just yeah. deeper crates, you know right. what I mean? But, you know, it, we have YouTube, we have all these other resources, so we can still dig online and all right. that kind of stuff. But like, yeah, it's like the more stuff we, we've added, all these different tools, it's, it definitely, I listen to records differently now. Right. I don't I'm even... Sure. I can listen to a record. It might not even be a dope sample. I'm like, those drums are crazy. I can take those drums now. That's what I'm saying. And that's what <laughs> I learned, you know, so everybody, like, we're recording this today, and I think less than 24 hours ago, um, he came out with a rhythm roulette. Uh, it's yeah. Mass Appeal does yeah, that. Mass so, Appeal, right? yeah. yeah. And, Serato um, Serato, and if yeah. you've not checked that out, that whole series is dope. Yeah, but, it's super dope. Um, they have to go to a record store, usually like Amoeba Records or somewhere, you know, yeah. with a lot of records, and pick three records with their with a blindfold on yep. and then make a beat out of it. And it's incredible. You know, the creativity that comes out of that is so amazing and watching uh, producers, you know, take these sounds and flip them. The samples is crazy, but then watching you do it with Serato studio and the stems really opened my mind even more and wow. further into like what you just said, where 
you said something in the episode. You said unlimited breaks. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I need like a shirt that says <laughs> yeah. that. Cause like, that's all I've been thinking about since I watched it last night. It's like unlimited breaks. And I'm like, he's so right. Cause I watched you take the record, you put it on, and I was like, oh, that's a dope sample. He's gonna flip it. And then you sped it up, you took out everything else, you took just the drum break, <laughs> right. and I was like, damn. And then you put on <laughs> like, you know, stuff to make it punchier and sound better. And I was like, oh my God, like I've thought of that, but not really yeah, thought right. of it like right. that. Like that was right. mind blowing. And it that's unlimited breaks like that's yeah. all i kept thinking like yeah. oh he's right you literally can just listen through because we used to go through and listen to the first few seconds of all the records yeah okay there's nothing in the beginning oh that sample could be cool and you'd yeah. mark it down on the vinyl or you'd go through the parts that maybe you know even look at the record itself and yeah, you can see what was dark, in there yeah the, the grooves, dark, yeah, right the dark groove, yeah. okay maybe this part but it's such a different level now like yeah. you're just like who cares like i'm just gonna take that drum break and, and you could chop any part of it or yeah and replay it or just oh my god you know what i mean and then layer that with other drums and you know it's like i don't know like <laughs> all you know there's all these like ai programs that are yes. stem makers you know what i mean like yeah the la la ai and the yeah you know what i mean like and so it's like i've i've tried each one like literally i when i'm when i'm when I'm not making music, that's what I'm researching is like different right. ways. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like it could be um what's the other one? Rip X. Like yeah. stuff like Stem that. Stemverter yeah. is dope. Yeah, um, I don't say I don't even know that. I gotta look that, that one's one really up. dope. Yeah. Uh, it some of them take longer but right. have high quality. Right. Um I just love the real time thing of Serato. You yeah, know, that's dude, the that's thing. What, that's, you that's, click that's what that button. I'm saying. <laughs> it's like making beats and then you're like, Oh, I can actually take that vocal out or I yeah. can I can make an acapella with it and put it on top of this. And then whatever you put in there, like the first sample you put in there sets the, you know, you set your key and then everything you bring in after that is going to be in the same key. So you're like, Oh, is that, is that, that's true? how it works. Yeah. So any, so as soon as you put the first, and that's a Serato studio that's feature. A, that's yeah. That's, uh, there's no, other it'll do like a that. key lock. Almost like if you put key lock on when you're DJing in Serato yeah. and it'll be like, Oh, you're in seven a, I'm going to mix this in in seven a. Exactly. It does that with the samples. Yes. Oh my God. I didn't know that. Yes. That's so, crazy. So everything you drag in from that point is going to put it in key. Wow. And I'm like, <laughs> how can you do <laughs> hand delivering it? Yeah. It's like, but for someone like you, it's incredible. You know, and it's crazy because it's almost like, too many options, it, it makes your head explode. That's true. Um, but, wow, that's that's nuts. I didn't realize that. Yeah. And you could turn that off, obviously, if you want to. Yeah, you can. But, like, it'll help you to really get the rough idea of the beat better. And then yeah. you can decide what you want to do. Exactly. And it's just, you know, and you oh can just God. experiment. You can just experiment. Like, you could even just make samples in there. If I just wanted to make my own loop, yeah. I can take different parts from all these different records and right. just make a whole new loop. And yeah. I can chop that and sample that. And make right. So it's like, you know, it's like, it's just looking at these different tools and like, how can I, you know what I mean? Yeah. How can I use this to, to, you could record a band with? like jamming live only with just one mic, even, you know, or a right. couple of mics, then go back and try to extract parts of it. Like it's a sample. Yeah. Or who knows? That's, it's crazy. Wow. It's crazy, <laughs> man. So I'm, I'm, you know, it's like, you know, I, I literally research this stuff and I have friends that, you know, my boy Siege and Siege Monstrosity, we, you know, they're always like putting me up on it. DJ Dahi, he's another one. Like yeah. we, we talk shop okay. all the time. Jake one. Yeah. We all just like, you know, call each other like, yo, I discovered this new thing, you know, right. I, you know, a chord, I, you know, I got this chord, you know, thing that makes its own chords and you know what I mean? All right. that kind of stuff. So. <clears throat> That's you know, crazy. we're always trying to find an edge, you know what I mean? And we share the information. So what like about like, I thought of an AI thing. I don't, it probably exists, but like, I, I've always pictured having like companion players. Like, you know, if you don't know how to play bass very well, like, okay, you could lay down simple bass, but you want like an ill bass player. Like, could there be a plug in where you in how they do with the chat GPT thing and yeah. they feed it all the information. So then when you ask it stuff, it can, give you educated stuff back. Like, could you feed a bass player, like ev all your favorite bass lines, and then it can jam with you on, like you could put it on your track and be like, yo, do a few bass line ideas to this. And then, but it only knows like James idea. Brown and dope stuff. And then you tell it like, okay, you have a two minute jam out. And then you listen to what it did and you can chop up the parts of it. Like almost like quest love could train his own AI drummer guy. And then you could buy the quest love 
AI plugin right? <laughs> that plays on your track That'd or something, right? I feel I like mean, that has to be They have coming. something that's kind of, I mean, you know, like they have like Easy Keys and Easy Drummer that have kind of those. Like built-in things. Kind of. Yeah. But, it's but not, this is on some like This is, yeah, what you're GPT. saying is a little bit, yeah. Because I was watching how all that works. I'm like, there's no reason we couldn't just have a virtual version of somebody or even with the singers or I don't know, like, yeah, man, you know, I mean, the Khalil you know, AI plugin that's like yeah. can chop the sample like 20 different ways that you are known to do it right. and then you can choose from those 20 ways how you want to do it yeah, take man. that in midi and put it in it's all coming knows. i feel like that's all coming i know it's, it's all happening there. so fast it's right? happening too fast it's, it's so, incredible. native instruments don't steal my idea yeah. or do let's collab <laughs> let's go <laughs> uh, i'm gonna hit dna after yeah this. exactly <laughs> okay i got an idea DNA. Um, yeah, so I know I love all the AI stuff and all the futuristic yeah. ideas happening. And, um, yeah, yeah when Serato, you know, shout to Serato. Thank you, yeah, Serato, Serato, for giving Serato. us the tools, you know, really for free in a right, way. Right, like, right. To be able to do this. You know, yeah. I, I'm able to tour the world and do these crazy events and be able to be like, hey, can you play this kind of music? I'm like, all right, within a, now with like Beat Source, I mean, not to be like the self promo, yeah. <laughs> but. Good. For real, like I'm doing this event Tuesday and they're like, oh, the person loves classic rock. So I'm like instantly like classic rock, beat source, save to uh, save to Serato. I look in my Serato, the crate's already in there wow. and I could just DJ streaming off the internet and then I drag it into a locker and it's downloaded so I have the protection if in case the Wi-Fi goes off. Goes out, right. I also have the stems if I really just want to play the drum break of like ACDC in the beginning to mix it in, then go back, you know. That's, like that's see, crazy. I haven't I haven't all the way explored it in terms of DJing yet. Like it's, I've only done it. On I can production. mix in songs where like you know R and B songs, uh, where it's like oh she starts singing like right on the one. So I'll just put instrumental on the right side and then I just mix it in and then I have it on the left. You know and then I can echo out the song playing. It's almost like I have doubles. You know right, like the right, twelve inch. Right, right. And then I can echo it out. Then the instrumental's playing. Then on the left side I bring it in with the vocals. Ah, 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 boom and then. Crazy. It's like, oh, I could have never done that before. I right. always had to like do reverb and then drop it or something, right, right, you know. Right. And Easy. just to hear the drums, because that's the thing with Beat Source. That's what I was telling you before is that you know you don't necessarily want to buy every song or have every song. This way, I can just search it up the same way you can in Spotify, right. and I can listen to the drum break off that or record that into Ableton. You know, loop loop back it in or something that's like that. Crazy. So. Crazy, um, man. You know, songs I would never probably get or ones you can find on YouTube, but yeah. it's definitely getting to the point of it was already crazy being able to like carry around all of my crates of records inside <laughs> my laptop. And now it's like, oh, my God, we're like going to Mars. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. too much. Um, but yeah, I love it. So yeah, I, I mean that rhythm roulette, you killed it too. The beat Thank was super you, dope. Appreciate I was actually showing it to my son this morning, uh, before I was like, I'm really? interviewing him. I'm like, check this out, you know? <laughs> and he's like, what's he doing? I was like, trying to show him what's up. Um, yeah, it's always nerve wracking doing rhythm roulette. Cause you're like, I'm sure. Man, please don't bomb. It's like, just, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I feel like every producer in the back of their mind is like, oh my God, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, <clears throat> Well, the YouTube comments were pretty nice. Yeah, it was good. It I was, was good. like, all right. I was happy. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see one negative one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> That's hard good. on YouTube. Yeah, it's hard. But you <laughs> you just, can't you, please you, everybody. You got to take that out of your mind when yeah. you get it. You know of course. I mean? That's like DJing. I mean, I had to play at South by Southwest last week with like Jazzy. Talk about looking up to your oh, heroes. I mean, you know, Jazzy Jeff and Scratch Bastard and everybody. And I'm just like, oh, God. Those I are. Got to do a good job. Those are my <laughs> guys, man. Like, Jeff is. It's like when I met him, it was like meeting Dre, you know, yeah, it was like totally, he's up there like that for me. Oh yeah, same. And Scratch Bastard, I just know him through my boy Chin because I used to go to Toronto. And oh yeah, Freeze the Chin. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, Chin, yeah, Chin, um, Chin and Jetty. And <clears throat> we, I remember we did a session in Toronto, and Scratch Bastard was there, and I was like, I didn't really know who he was, you yeah. know what I mean? But he was, I was like, yo, this guy's incredible. So shout out to Scratch Bastard and Jesse. Oh yeah, Jeff, he's man. the best. I'm always saying he should be like. They should be like the presidents of DJing. Like, Straight up. <laughs> they do Literally. it for the right reasons. Great things come out of it. Right. They're happy, smiley. You feel good watching them. Right. Whether it's on Twitch, whether it's in real life. It's what DJing it's is listening. supposed to be. Like, exactly. What they are like the, yeah. you know, prime example the of what DJing is supposed to be. ultimate represent. Yeah. You know, representers of yeah, they're ambassadors. DJing. Yeah, yes. ambassadors of DJing. I'm like, thank you for all yeah. you do. Like, if anyone needs to look at someone, yeah. they are the people. Man. Um, yeah, and I mean, last 
it was like being at summer camp a couple weeks ago at South by Southwest because it was just all of us every night from like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like we're all in this one place. That's and crazy. it was crazy. Like one night, like Scratch Bastard was like, yo, I, you know, there's this little eight seat omakase sushi place inside of a bookcase in this venue. We have one seat left if you want to come. I'm like, I have to come. Right. So <laughs> I went and it's like, they're playing like Helta Skelta while the guy's That's cooking dope. us. Yeah, I was like, That's just dope. the music alone, you know, yeah. like playing like La Fleur, La Flash, right. Goshka, <laughs> while the guy's cooking A5 Wagyu steak. And I'm like, all right, this is my dream come true. That's incredible. And then we walk out of this bookcase, and this the bartender was amazing, and like she made a different drink for every like 14 courses or something. And I don't really drink that much, I right. kept telling them. <laughs> right. So, like, we walked out, I was like, I can't even see. And Scratch Bass is like, I got a DJ on four turntables with Jazzy Jeff right now, <laughs> but of course, he absolutely smashed it. But we walk out, and yeah, he Bastard gets on, then does four turntables with Jazzy Jeff, then it goes into like the most legendary hip hop night I've ever seen with like. Red Man, Freeway, Just Blaze, thing. Beanie Siegel, clip, Just Blaze. Yeah, yeah we're dude. all in this tiny room. And the, the Omakase bookcase place was like right there. We just walked out of it into that room. And then it was just like so the most that amazing clip. night. There was like that one clip like yeah. that went viral. And I, I yeah. watched that like a billion Cypher times. Sounds. See, yeah. He was at the or dinner, Redman. Cypher Sounds. Like, yeah, dude, that's crazy. Crazy. Like yeah, what is incredible. going on here? Shout to this guy, Paul from 12 Rivers. He's the guy that he built. I mean, he's, it's all his thing. I mean, wow. it, he just puts that all together and, Incredible. um, yeah, unreal. Yeah, so that was that. dream come true status. Yeah, dude, and crazy. like you said, I got to do the same thing over the pandemic with this podcast in a way it was a blessing. Like we started it right before the pandemic. And then right when it started, I'm like, oh no, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And I just turned on the webcam and was like, I'll try it this way. And next thing I know, I'm having these three, four, five, six hour conversations with Z Trip, Jazzy Jeff, you know, Green Lantern, like people I've looked up to. And, and right. like, it's crazy, you know, and I, and I got to really learn a lot because no one had anything to do. I probably talked to Z Trip for six hours. Right. You know, I'm like, this is the best <laughs> night of my life. Um, but was, same, you learn so much, you get inspired. And as, as horrible as the pandemic was, I feel like we all got to take some stuff from it and have that rebirth moment where now we're coming back out and I almost feel like new in certain ways in my DJ career. And yep. like you said, with the production, Dude, it's it, a whole new it time. my life. Like I, I just, you know, I think like for everybody, you know, just, it was terrifying. You know what I mean? Yeah, Cause you're like, we sure. couldn't go to the grocery store. We can go anywhere. Oh, we're God. like, I'm going to die. Or yeah. you know what I mean? Or, I don't yeah. want my kids. And we're, we're, we have kids. You yeah. Know what I mean? So, so it's even crazier. Yeah. Can't so, go to school or we're on homeschool. Yeah. Homeschool. So it's like, you know, we're, we're trying to manage all this and adjust. And, but it was like, you know, all these amazing things happened during that time. Yeah. And it was like, I, I just, all I had was gratitude. It was just yeah. like, that's all I could think about was like, thank God, you know, I'm safe. My family's safe. So true. You know what I mean? I have these amazing relationships. I can reach out to people, yeah. which, I, which is what I, I did. And like, and then, you know, verses happened, came out of that. And oh the nice God. came out of that. It was oh. like, it was such, it ended up being like a celebration yeah. with all the chaos going on in the world. It was just like, yeah. I could only be thankful for what I had and that I was safe and that, that I, you know, I was more grateful for who I was yeah. you know, literally and yeah. all the blessings that I have and all the amazing people I've been able to totally. encounter all my heroes, you yeah. know what I mean? And that inspired me. So I think that just fed into my creativity and all this amazing stuff came out of it. You know what That's I mean? So just cool. Work with John Baptiste, working with Kendrick, working, you know what I mean? Like uh, uh, Kanye, you know, Crazy. being on Donda and they were, yeah. you know, these are all Grammy nominated, Grammy award winning albums. Now. Right. You know, and that came out of the pandemic. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's Crazy. amazing. So it's just, you know, it's, it, it just, it just shows like, you know, that's my attitude from now on. It's just gratitude. Like, yeah. like I get to wake up and do what I love every right. day. And like, I just take it, you know, I just, it's, it could be taken away from me. Yeah. Just like we, we, we saw it, could, it all, everything could be taken away from you. Like, like yeah, that. at any second. Yeah. You know, totally. I try to carry that into my life now or anything, yeah. any decision I have to make. I'm like, all right, we went through that. Yeah. I have to do this. There's yeah. no choice. You know, There's no choice. Exactly. You got to do it. So I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it, it was, it was like a, a lesson, you yeah. know what I mean? A, the, like one of the biggest lessons of my life. So. Right. And how music just brings everyone together, you know, yeah. the whole world is watching verses or doing these things or watching D nice or yeah. all that stuff, you know, like, I, I mean, it, that was 
such and an DJing is yeah, DJing. DJing itself yep. became this connector, you know, yeah. and Twitch and Instagram and, and the way, right. you know, our social media way, you know, was used in a positive way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I was following, um, another person that like inspired me during that time was Kenny beats. I was following Kenny beats and watching him, Yeah, you know, just like make music online, but you know, he already had like the cave and all that stuff. But then, you know, he started like giving advice to producers and you know what I mean? And like, yeah, you know, doing that was dope too. I would watch everyone from like disclosure to like Kenny beats to like all the different sides of the music. And they would do those or yeah. Kenny beats actually was like probably got me addicted to Twitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I was, yeah, I went, were you, you I, were on one of the beat battle, or were you yeah, on? I, I judged watched, one of them. Yeah, I, judged I watched one of them you on that. We were, we, you know, I got to know him during that time. This is just a, a relationship that we just, we just developed and he, he yeah. knew about self-scientific and he and Chase okay. were already tight because I called Chase like, man, do you know Kenny Beast? He's like, yeah, that's, that's my guy and like, he plugged us in and like, and we just became really good friends. And he's like, well, he's hilarious. I, and, he, <laughs> and he's hilarious, but he's just, he's such a good dude. Yeah. And, and all his people are just incredible. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they, they do so many things behind the scenes. They help so many people. And like, totally. And that's his whole, his whole mantra is I'm going to help people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to empower producers and empower people to like, I know. I love it. Discord. That's how I learned about discord yeah. through him. Yeah. And, I, and he's crazy. the same. He has the same exact thing that you have and that all those great people you were naming, which is the curiosity and the passion to move forward and not get stagnant yeah. and not get complacent That's and to right. try new things. That's right. Not worry about failing. Yeah. Try new sounds. You know, he puts out, so- I remember he put out songs and he's like, you guys might not like this, but this is what I'm this feeling what I'm right doing. now. I right. got this drum kit now. I'm recording it. I got this live bass, and Dude, you know, it's crazy. I mean, I saw him like his gear went from like he built this yeah, studio. I watched, and then all of a sudden it was like I, every time I'll go over there, I'm like, "Dude, where did you get this stuff from?" <laughs> you know, he had like a GX one, like this big space organ. I'm I like, know. "You got? Where did you find this?" <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's he like, "All these start, subs, oh. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, that sub sub you money." Know? But it's like, you know, those are people you want to be around. You know what yes. I mean? They're inspiring. You know yeah. what I mean? And they, and they want to help other people. And it's just like, you know, you it's hard to find people like that. Yeah. You know no, it was mean? dope to watch. They'd be like, some dude would be like, my laptop fell in the ocean. You know, and then the whole <laughs> Discord would be like, we're all putting in $1. And it was like 3,000 people exactly. all putting in $1. Gotta- and this dude gets a laptop. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Like, this is amazing. It's amazing, man. Yeah. It's and amazing. then all of a sudden he's like, here's the guy's beat. And we're yeah. like, yeah, we love you. And I'm like, this is... This is the power of music. For real. Seriously. You know? It's crazy, man. But yeah, shout out to Kenny Beats. Yeah, that's shout out to Kenny Beats and, and all that. And you know, and still like we were saying, Scratch Bassett, he does Tuesday morning coffee. Yeah. And he's doing this show and, and Jazzy Jeff. And then Jazzy Jeff got Grandmaster Flash to come on Twitch. And like, come I was on. watching that. Like, this is crazy. And it's like, teaching kids, even my kid. You know, I get to show them. I had it on all the time. He's like, Who's that? Who's oh, who's D nice? Who's right, that? So right. I get to do my little history lesson, you that's know. That's crazy, man. Um, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, so it's it's nice to have it accessible like that too, because it's not like okay, when you're 21, I'll take you to the club. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like here you go, check it out. This is it, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's dope. Yeah, that's super dope. Um, and you know, speaking of self scientific, like I was saying, that's you know, that's your original hip hop group, right? Yeah, I mean, from the 90s. Yeah. Um, me and me L A. Chase. L A. Staple, Chase Infinite. Yeah. Um, who's now doing so much dope yeah. stuff in. From coffee to music Everything. to... He's, he's a renaissance man. Right? Like I mean, and he's behind Grisella. some of the dope new music that people love. Yeah, that's Griselda to Denzel Curry to... I mean, they, you know... Anyone yeah. that's dope and doing it for the right reason in a way, the same way you guys are, right? Yeah. All these people you're naming, yep. like are the kind of music that will live on for 20, 30 more years. You know, we'll listen to it in 20 years and go, oh, it still sounds dope. Right. You know, and I feel like he's he's giving that influence that you guys had, you know, and have still, uh, and bringing it into the new generation and showing them. So, like, they carry it on to the next generation, you know. And the coffee shop thing is dope, you know. Yeah, the Haroon Coffee, man. I mean, he just opened up a spot downtown. And that's just the community thing, like we're saying, in the way that we had during the pandemic, for digital, he's doing that in real life. I feel yeah. like with the coffee shop, that's, right? I mean, that's yeah. I mean, it's it's like it's it's become like a central part of Le, like Lamert Park, you know so what dope. I mean? And like, which was the uh, central part of LA hip hop, you yeah. know, freestyle fellowship, exactly. And all you know that, what I mean? Right? And just and just the black community in general, yeah. like this is that's that's our, you know what I mean? Yes. Like our segment of LA, and 
and just the you know he he and that was his intention yeah was just to like i'm so gonna open cool. up a coffee shop and i was like you are <laughs> like he's like yeah i'm gonna open up in lamert and you know and you know we all grew up around lamert and all that right. kind of stuff we you know we hung out there but it was just amazing to see his vision like right. literally you know it's it, it's here and he's expanding and you know yeah, what I, I mean? saw him just post like i know it's crazy in this climate but we're opening a new yep. shop <laughs> he's i mean with chase is he's fearless man he's fearless like he's he's fearless as a as a creative on, on every level and man. he's a and and he's he's so important to i always say this like he's so important to just la culture yeah. but just like the music culture too like there's no there's rare there, there's only a few people that can exist in in all these different areas yes. in a, at a high level like yeah. fashion music creativity totally. the business side the community side right. like chase is elite on all those different levels yeah and being a good person and a great guy yeah he's i mean that's my best friend you see those people and you're like oh they're he's like know. my brother literally he's like my yeah. brother so it's like you know we, we we've known each other since the eighth grade yeah you know what i mean that's we amazing. playing basketball against each other so He's like, you know, and in a way he's as much as he's known in the industry and we know him and we're giving him his props. I feel like he's somewhat low key compared to other people in that position. In I, a get, way. I get on him about that because I'm like, <laughs> people need to know, you right. know, because yeah. people because I think I that's agree. just the difference is like people need to know what you're behind. Like you, you built two, two uh, major movements out of New York, Griselda and ASAP. Right. My, you know what I mean? Like. Those and and I remember from, when ASAP came out, you know, and I was yeah. into it. I'm like, damn, who the hell are these people? This is so dope. And then when I found out he was, you know, part yeah. of it, I'm like, of course, yeah. I mean, all it's right, like that's being, why. I'm like, there had to be some extra thing. And he's and from that was LA. It. That's what I'm saying. He's right. from LA, and he ushered in two right. of the biggest movements to come out of New York in like forever. Right. But you I, mean, I mean, LA took that New York sound, and we turned it into our own thing during that's that true. time in the mid '90s yeah, that's true. when it almost. Not got stale out of New York, but it did get oversaturated. There was so much like underground hip hop. Right. Like, I don't even know what's good or not anymore. Right, right. And then we took it and dilated peoples and everybody That's started right. you know, beat junkies and building it up into our own thing where the New York people are like, wait, you guys are right. doing some dope <laughs> shit. So I feel like it's this weird tennis game so where it true. went back and forth. And so he's like, all right. So he has that. I don't know. There's something about it. The, the yeah. Not credibility, but... He's that, a tastemaker, yeah, you know. Yeah. He's a tastemaker. Like Chase is always around whatever's dope. He's yeah. gonna be. He's gonna be associated with it. And and he's turned down stuff that like I'm like, damn, you turned that down. But like, right. He knows who he is. He knows what where you know where that path goes. So I'm right. You know, I'm I'm super proud to like to be in a group with him. But just to be like that's like my brother. Literally, yeah, that's you know so I mean? cool. So that's like the power of no too. If you if you're yeah. focused on what you want know what you want to do then you say no to the right things and not saying yes to other things that you don't yeah. even know are there yet you know yeah making yeah. room for it i guess yeah uh, and it's and, it, and it's in line with dope. his with his brand and who he is yeah. as a person and how who he is as a tastemaker and a creative right really, you know what i mean so i i, I have nothing but respect for that right you know? yeah me too well uh I guess that leads to just DJ Retmatic wrote in and said, when is the new self-scientific coming <laughs> out? So I got to go. I got to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Rhett, my eczema brother. Yeah, Beat Junkies. Retmatic. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and all the Beat Junkies. Um, Retmatic actually DJed my wedding. So just a uh, fun fact out there. Incredible. <laughs> Um, Thank you, Rhett. Yeah, <laughs> sorry to put you. It's through coming that. soon, Rhett. We we I know we say this, but we we were for real finishing it. We we had a few detours right. and you know and it's like detox part two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which you you're know, part of <laughs> real real life things happen and yeah, you know, of course. And, and and we're we're I feel like we we're at one place and I think we're at where we need to be now and creatively. So yeah. I think you know I was trying to figure out the sound and we. I tend to like with our stuff, I tend to overproduce and I think, you know, Chase gets kind of annoyed by that, but, <laughs> but you know, I'm kind of like taking a different approach and I think it's like, it's sounding the way it's supposed right. to be. So, you know what I mean? We're, we're having fun with it. I think it's just like, you got to create space in your brain to be able to like, yeah, see what it is and like, okay, I think we found it and right. And we're both in the right place. We went through a lot of things like personally losing people, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, family members that passed away. So we're just trying to get, deal with that and now we're kind of like okay we need to we need to put that in the music now you yeah. know what i mean yeah you know so. yeah totally yeah in the same way that all that pandemic horrible stuff led to those amazing things you yeah know, you worked on yeah it's just in, it inspired put that art. into the music so um 
Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. The 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 you know the Kendrick stuff. I guess we can oh, start yeah. with. Um, yeah. I mean, first of all, when I heard that song. I mean, of course, the drums stood out immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, who the hell made this? You know, I had to go. I wish there was an easier way to see the credits on Spotify and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, I always have to go, boom, oh, okay, the dot, there we go. But I wish there was, like, a credits yeah. <laughs> mode, you know. But, um, yeah, drums are so dope. I mean, that just sounds like a song that we grew up on, but also a futuristic version of it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's just, like, a and tribute. Put Ghostface on it, which was That's crazy. That's what I'm saying. You know crazy. what I mean? Summer Walker, which is, like, oh my God. genius. To, yeah, what a combination of people like for Kendrick to do that you know yeah. what I mean and um you know but I, I did it with Soundwave and okay and and uh and J Pounds and um I think Beach Beach Noise I think that's the other so it's like you know everybody kind of played different roles but the music is all me like I, I over the pandemic I, I learned this thing in Ableton um there's this there's this Max for Live device called Cordimist and like wait see, what's it called it's called Cordimist <clears throat> Cordimist it's a chord generator and Siege Monstrosity was the one that put me onto it, and he was like, "Yo, you should check this out." And I watched the video, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" So over the pandemic, I just literally spent every waking moment trying to yeah. learn this thing, and I, I figured it out. Like I was like, "Okay, I got it." Wow! And then so I just started making my own samples, and and if you follow me, you know, in my stories during the pandemic, I was posting just little snippets of what I was doing, and yeah. I wouldn't show what it was. You can kind of see. The, Mac, the device, but you couldn't really see what it was. And, and every producer was like, what is that? Like, from no ID to, like, everybody was just like, yo, <laughs> what are you doing? Because especially Ableton guys. So, um, so I you know, I would I would just only share it with them, but not with everybody. Right. And then I just learned it. And then so I made this, the music in, in that. What does it do, all, or can you not say? <laughs> no, it's, 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 um I forgot, uh, I forgot the name of the guy that made it, but. It basically is like, you know how you have your drum rack and you have 128, like, spaces? Like, you know, you can put 128 drums in there. Yeah. It's the same thing with chords. So it's 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 set up that way, but you have major, minor, diminished, and I forgot what the other. So, like, you literally, you, you can build your own okay. chord sets. Yeah. And you can, you can put it up to 128 chords in this thing. So I'll just do, like, maybe, like, 32. I'll take, like, 32 of them and... And I'll make, and you just make chord progressions. So I just, it, but it's like playing by ear. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, if you know what, where well, you can put are, it in the key of the song. So every chord will be in the right key. Yeah. Well, you're, you're dictating what the chord, what, what, what the key is going to be. Okay. So like, you know, if I wanted to do a B flat major seventh or whatever, whatever yeah. it is, you know, I'm not a theory guy. So. Right. Right. But it, it, it helped me like, it's like sitting with a keyboard player and like, yo, play that. Yeah. I, I want you to play wow. something like this. So, but this is like, you can do it yourself and it sounds real. It sounds like somebody's actually playing. And it just like, when I was posting it, everybody, so Soundwave hit me up. It was like, yo, what is that? <laughs> and he was like, he was like, do you have, you know, folders of it? I was like, yeah, I was just started sending folders. And then he hit me up. He was like, yo man, Kendrick, you know, Kendrick recorded to one of them. And this was like way before the album was yeah about to come out, you know, but you know, he was like, he was like, you know, he didn't tell me who jumped on it because, you know, obviously. Yeah. And then um, and I think they just, you know, I think they beefed up the drums because I had drums in the sample, too. And, um, and I remember that one particular sample I sent it to, like, Jake One and a few other guys. And they were like, yo, like, you did this with Cordimus? Like, how did you do that? And I was, at, from that moment, I was like, okay, I, I'm on to something. Yeah. You know, if, if I got past that test, that, that was good. So Right. So, yeah, then, the, then I got a call from Kendrick's manager. He's like, yo, you made the album. You know, it's coming out, and you know, he told me he was on. I was like, "Wow, that's crazy!" You know what I mean? And I and I just had, you know, I just, you know, had done um, Hurricane with um, the Weekend, a little baby for Kanye. Yeah, and that was another sample. So I, you know, so like my pivot in the last like five years was just like I was just sending samples to all my, all the guys that I had relationships with, and right. I, would, I was getting placements that way. And you're saying, just for people to understand, you you're making a sample that then someone else used. Yeah. To make a beat. And they'll chop it up and do whatever, you yeah. know what I mean? And then it's like, you know, and then that's how we collaborate. It's like, it's co-writing, you know what yeah. I mean? <clears throat> it's co-writing and co-producing because I'm also delivering a sound as well. So, right. So their compositions, like, I, I'm not just making loops. I'm, like, actually sending them, like, you know, compositions with an A and a B section and maybe, like, another breakdown. Right. So In the same know. way you would listen to the record for Rhythm exactly. Roulette and pick the parts you want. You're like, here's a 
song or a sample. Or, exactly. You, know, you could speed it up. You could slow it down the same way you would sample anything. Exactly. Wow. And, you know, I, I, I send that stuff out with vocals, you know, like I, I work oh, with cool. Nikki Greer, the singer Nikki Greer. She's incredible. Yeah. So we'll make gospel samples, wow. all that stuff. So oh, crazy. So, you know, so that's like. That's been like a, the biggest part of my process lately. I don't even make beats. I make samples most of the time. Yeah. You know, compositions. So, okay. So that's like a big part of like what I do every day. But Cordimus kind of helped me flesh it out just on my own without musicians. Like, right. I can like get the idea out and then I can send it to my bass player. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. good. <laughs> bass player Dan. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> Mike stands are ridiculous. Exactly. Um, so, just, you know, I was able to, you know, just send stuff to them and, and you know, and they'll play on it and lace it. Yeah. And, you know. Wow. And so that's how I've just been working. You know that's I mean? so dope. Especially during the pandemic because we yeah. couldn't be in the same room. Right. Right. So. Yeah. Thank God for all technology. Exactly. And all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> that that's so that's so dope. Um, and um, and the John Baptiste stuff is like a whole different kind of thing. But was that did that come from a sample too? No, that came from just John. I I done session. I I did a session with him like years ago yeah and we we made an incredible record and he was just, and he just remembered the experience and you know they were talking about producers they wanted to help finish some of these records that he had yeah and he brought my name came up and um <clears throat> and so they hit up my manager and they're like yo would you be interested in working on this record and they didn't have full, it wasn't like a lot of money or anything right but this was during the pandemic i was like man send it I, yeah. I, I love john yeah you know what i mean i'm such a fan and they sent me, you know, they, they were just sending me records like, you know, can you add drums? Can you beef this up? Can you help us finish? And that's what I did. And so that's how Freedom came out of that. And that, okay. was, up for, that was up for Record of the Year for the Grammys. I mean, yeah. we, I forgot who we lost to, I think, like Silk Sonic or something. Right. You know, who, but uh, who just to be. Guys? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but just to be in that, you know, in that company was crazy. I'd never yeah. had a Record of the Year nomination. Right. And then, and then. And then we're, I was up for, we were up for a record, um, album of the year, and so was Kanye. So I was up for two album of the year. Nomina yeah, nomination. You probably worked with everyone on that because yeah. you've done stuff with Anderson. <laughs> yeah, uh, Anderson exactly. Pack. Yeah, man. I mean, he's he's my favorite. Like, Anderson? So, yeah, he's my favorite. The best. Too. I See, feel like he's just the greatest person. <laughs> it's incredible. He's, he's like incredible. a happy, he's another, like a scratch bastard Jazzy yeah. Jeff person that's like, you know, just does music for the right reasons. Can yeah. do, loves all genres. Has a great time. Now he's DJing all over the place. Yeah, you know, shout to Eddie McDonald. Like, right. I've been, I've done a bunch of gigs with them this year alone. Like, we were at wow. Sundance. We did, we did Trevor Noah's Grammy party. Where? Uh, it Crazy. was so much fun. Yeah, he comes in with his wig on. I opened. He comes in. He does a what hour he, set. DJ Pee Wee or something. Yeah, DJ Pee Wee. Pee -wee. So and yeah, Eddie McDonald travels with him. They bring vinyl everywhere and. um yeah, they came to my gig what this weekend, Saturday night. I was DJing. He comes in with some crazy rock wig <laughs> and like a silk green <laughs> thing open. And, you know, they're like, what up? <laughs> we just DJed the Hammer Museum. I'm like, all right, dope. Like, he's just killing it. His yeah. sets are so dope. Just so much fun. He'll yeah. get on the drums. You know, he has Maurice, the trumpet player. Yeah, Maurice and, is crazy. Yeah. yeah, so crazy. And it's just like, just good vibes, you know. And it's just his voice and like. He's, no, he's incredible, man. Yeah. I, mean, he's, I mean, he's, you know, I when I've, every time I've worked with him, like, I feel like I don't know music. <laughs> like, he just, this guy just knows music. Like, he puts right. me on the stuff. You know what I mean? And when you yeah. work with artists like that, you're like, you know, that's rare. You know what I mean? Because yeah. as a producer, you're like, oh, I know my, my right. shit. But he, that dude, man, knows music. Yeah. He is no joke. And, right. You know, and it's like, no matter what. Every time I go in the studio with him, we make something incredible. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. He's just, he's one of the best performers in the world. He's one of the best creatives, period. He's, he's, that's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why Dr. Dre kind of picked both you out to yeah, uh, yeah. mentor you guys. <laughs> you know, I think there's not many people that could say Dr. Dre kind of is like their main big brother mentor. And yeah. I feel like Anderson and you. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, Snoop Dogg. Like, I, yeah. I can't think of many other people. No, that's crazy, man. <laughs> um, it's crazy. You know, crazy because there's people that have worked with him or been close with him. And, you know, Scott Storch and different stuff. But I yeah. feel like, I don't know, you guys are in this world where um, I think, you know, I don't know him. But he must get something from you guys. You know, I think a, a lot of people look at mentorship as like, 
this person will bless you with their knowledge. Yeah, but I think a it's a two thing. way street. Yeah. Like I think the mentor and the mentee like have to have this two way street where yep. the mentor has to be like, damn, I'm inspired by this person. I'm learning from this person or, but I'm teaching them at the same time. And obviously I'm in a different position, but that's exactly what it is. I think that's, that's, that's why it works so perfectly. And that's yeah. why it's hard. Cause nowadays people are like, it's like the internet, like get a mentor. Here you go. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, like yeah, very yeah. like sign up for my Patreon. Right, I will yeah. mentor you. It's like, yeah, right, right. yes, that's cool. And I'm happy to give you advice on zoom, but right. <laughs> it's different when it's like, I've had people like that too, where I'm like, oh my God, I need you to come to all my gigs. Like, I just watched you, DJ. Right. I need you to come with me. And then I, you give me ideas and, you know, stuff that's, like that. It's got to be a two way, you know, to yeah. me, that, that's the best mentorship was when it's, it's, it's both ways. You right. know what I mean? And, and like, with Dre, is, it's always that, you know what I mean? Cause he's, he's inspired by, by me. Like, I would go to sessions at, at, at a certain point when I, you know, cause I was just, when we were working on detox and all that kind of stuff and like really digging in on his record, like I would walk in and, and he was so inspired by what I would do. He would stop what he was doing. Crazy. And like, yo, what do you have? Yeah. Let's stop everything we're doing. I want to hear what you, what you, what you're bringing. You right. know what I mean? But you know, I feel like that was my job. My job is to help inspire you too. It's yeah. not, you know, and I think some people would just take the information and run and just do whatever, but it's, it's, it is give and take, you know what right. I mean? And, and my job is to inspire him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, and, and thank God I inspired my, my hit, one of my heroes. Right. You know what I mean? Well, I think you had a good way of taking in what you kind of grew up on listening to from him and then yeah. putting it back out into your own yeah. way. You know, when yeah. I listen to your G unit beats, yeah. obviously they have Dre inspiration inside of them, but yeah. they're different. You know, yeah. they're your signature sound, yeah. but they have that taste of his stuff in of there his, i think yeah. and <clears throat> i mean kush right that's oh, yeah. the song yep. you guys put out and yep. that was when everyone's like detox is coming here yeah. we go <laughs> and it was like the teaser that yeah you know yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but that was the sound and even people thought it was nate dog and you know yeah. uh yeah. it sounded i mean still sounds just like him yeah you know? yeah yeah yeah. Um, that was, yeah that was I, I still can't believe that 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 is like i actually have a song with you know yeah. what i mean like it still it it's mind blowing that like yeah. I have a song with Dre and Snoop. Like I have one. <laughs> like it's yes. produced by me. Yeah. Like, you know, and that's oh, no. that's just it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? So not many people can say that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I've worked with Jay Z. I've got a record that's produced by DJ Khalil on a Jay Z album. So you know dope. I mean? so, yeah. I mean, and I heard you tell that story on another podcast i think you know i mean I, I don't want you to have to tell it again but uh if you want to but oh, no, i don't mind i mean it's, you know i mean every, everything yeah. centers around detox so everything i was right. giving you at the time was for detox okay and there was this one at the time it was just bcds you didn't send folders you had to, you mm -hmm. had to bring a cd and i i i this one was loaded with like yeah every, like everything was on the c everything on the cd got taken by somebody wow you know what i mean and it's a super fire cd yeah, it was crazy <laughs> you know what i mean and um and I, I i was just at my height and and i remember dre like took the beat that um eventually became i made it for jay-z right for, for kingdom come okay um and he was like yo i'm gonna get jay-z to write it he sends it to jay-z jay-z I guess not telling Dre records a song to it. Not for him though. For, he's like, for my album, he calls Dre. He's like, I need this for my album. <laughs> and he had already mastered the album already. He already mastered um, Kingdom Come. It was already right. done. And and Dre was like, wait, you want to keep it? He's like, so it's not going to be for me. You know what I mean? It's not going to be for me. <laughs> right. And, he, and, and uh, but Dre was gracious enough to just say, man, no, nah, man, keep it. It's all good. You know what I mean? And he called me personally and Dre called me and was like, congratulations congratulations you made jay-z's album i'm like wait what this is a comeback <laughs> album so i'm like there's no way there's no way i'm on this record and, right and so and this was the coolest part about it. it was like he was asking me like yo i need the the song information like what you sample and i was like dre that's not a sample and he's like no dude he's like you don't want to get sued like for real i need the sample information I'm like dre i didn't sample that's that's my boy dante and his wife mashika and he was like, for real? I was like, yeah. He's like, he's like, wow. Like from that point on, he looked at me completely different. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because no one was doing that. No. You know what I mean? It, especially in his camp. And he was just like, yo, you like you put your foot in that. That's incredible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. So that kind of like, you know, was more confirmation that like 
I, you can create your own samples. You know what I mean? You, you, if you're right, if you're around the right people, you can recreate. We can make stuff just as good, if not better, than the stuff we sample on records. Like, right. Literally. And I truly believe that to this day. That's why I love that there's loop makers and all these sample makers now because yep. everyone else is realizing it. I was doing that in 2006. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, literally, but now everybody, it's big business now. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's And it's in, like, all genres, like house music. Crazy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Yeah, like house music. I know, I mean, this this uh, guy, Novador, I know, like, and Leno, like, they'll play me stuff. And I'm like, oh, damn. Either it sounds like the original, right? you know, Bobby Caldwell, whatever song, or it just, I'm like, what's that sample? And they're like, oh, no, we made that. It was like <laughs> right. a funk band, like, 95 BPM song. Put it up to 120, you know, the pitch up and all the stuff, resampled it, made a house song out of it. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. crazy. So they're it, they're doing it in all other genres. And they're in their early 20s, you know what I mean? They're yeah, kids, man. and and they're focused on making these samples and, and or finding other players that can do it. And it's crazy to see the, the growth of all that stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like, all this is leading to something. Yeah. Le like, just think, like, 10 years from now, all these – people that are creating these loops and all this stuff it's it's going to change music yeah it's going to change music and That's i think true. like all these people that are composing everyone's composing now which is incredible it's right. not just about making beats it's about like yeah, you're right. actually making samples and you're seeing even on instagram you're seeing all these bands and musicians you know post stuff up and you're like Damn, all this stuff is incredible yeah it's incredible so it's like i think it's it's actually going to make I feel like there's there's on the horizon there's something special that's gonna happen. Yeah, I can't tell you what, but I truly believe that like music is like slowly changing before our eyes. Right. You know what I mean, for the better. Like, yeah, for, I you know agree. I mean? so. There's so many factors to it. I think, and then just the connection of the whole globe. You know, with with the how the internet has connected all the music and how Afro beats and different types of music can yeah. become so big. Mm -hmm. uh, here where it was harder for it to spread you know and just yeah. the kind of globalization of music i guess or yeah. whatever it is um and then yeah i mean just like who knows those loop things might be the the library music of 20 years from now how Literally. we used to find those songs that they would just use for a background track on the radio in the right. 1960s <laughs> exactly. it's like now that could be in 20 years people find these old wave files or that's something what that's what's gonna be. <laughs> find it's that like, beat cd you made yeah, you know or something exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, well, I mean, you know, we're talking so much about production, but this is truly like a DJ podcast. Um, and, you know, everyone listening is, you know, so into DJing. And, like, I was wondering how do you think, you know, you're a DJ and you're a real deal G DJ. And that's what you that's what you're doing before you're producing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think DJing has shaped your just musical journey, but, you know, your journey in, as a whole, like, with production and all that stuff. And you're still DJing, too, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, it. I mean, I just think, like, as you DJ and you're, I think, as you listen to music, you know, yeah. as DJs, that's all we did. We would sit around right. and listen to music. Yeah. We're blending stuff. We're trying different things. And I just think you catalog all this stuff in your head. You know, you're cataloging melody. You're cataloging arrangement. All these things, that all, all of our favorite records, whether it's Rock With You, Michael Jackson, to full clip gang star. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you're you're taking all this stuff in. So you're you're naturally a tastemaker at that point. You know what's yeah. gonna work at a party. You know what I mean? So when you're when you're making beats, you're applying the same knowledge to what you're yeah. doing. True. You're like, I know that people are gonna be into this sound. I know this drum sound's gonna work. I know if I put a clap on this, it's gonna work if I play it for so and so. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's it's just, you know, I think it's it's the same kind of skill set, but like you know, you're you're actually creating the music instead of spinning it. You know what I mean? But I think it's just even like digging for records. Like I would just listen for. I would take all all, all day Sunday and clean and listen to records. Yep. And always have a record playing because your brain is is automatically taking in all this information, yeah. whether you know it or not. And I think it's so when you start playing, all that stuff comes out and you're playing everything. You know what I mean? True. It's, it really is like subconsciously we are we are taking in all this stuff. That's why all the best producers are DJs. You know yeah. what I mean? Premier, Pete Rock, Dr. Yeah. Dre. Like, you know True. what I mean? You name it. Like, they started off DJing because they know what sounds good. They know what's, what's going to work. They know what's going to work in terms of a song. Right. You know what I mean? Because we, yeah. we learn about songs too. Yeah, like you said, playing it and seeing the crowd's reaction. Yeah, and what they sing. Like, you know you know when you can turn the record down and you hear the whole crowd singing. Right. 
you know what's going to work when you're yeah. in the studio work with somebody like, oh, I know the crowds are going to love right. it. You know Every what I mean? Every Kendrick Lamar song has at least one of those moments. Exactly. You know what I you mean? What I like, mean? Like, it's like, you know, that's a skill. That That's a skill that, like, the, the normal a normal person just yeah. can't pick up. That's you know true. what I mean? So it's, it's you know, you just develop these skill sets from DJing, and I think it's just it just becomes a part of right. who you are as a producer. What about, like, do you have any – standout dj gigs that that just mean something to you or oh were amazing God. or just you I couldn't believe to, were happening I, man before i i stopped djing like at a certain point because i just started hating the music that was coming out so right. i just stopped and i just focused on production but before that i did um there's a few i did i used to dj all of uh will will smith and jada pinkett's kids parties okay so they would have me and my brother jalal my, my brother jalal is the reason why i even got into djing oh wow and so we would do these parties was at he a their DJ? house. Yeah, he he started off as a DJ, but when he left for college, he left his stuff behind, oh. and I became a <laughs> DJ. So you know, I just I just got really good, and I I started sending him tapes because I was like, yo, I you know I was mixing on your equipment. You know, I have to ask him. Right? Does he do music now? No, he 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 actually he passed away in November. Oh, I'm but, sorry, but he he helped me with my business. You know, the reason why I'm even here right. is because of because of my brother Jalal. Yeah, and and you know he's like my hero. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, of course. So we, you know, we would do these parties with with Will and Jada. Yeah, and the kids and like Eddie Murphy would be there. The Wayans family. <laughs> It was Amazing. like the elite of Black Hollywood right was there, and it was on this like their estate in Calabasas. You know what I mean? And we, yeah. I did that like for years. I mean, right. we did that for years for their kids, like um, his son Trey and all of them. You know yeah. what I mean? So that was incredible, just seeing that. And then I had to do um, Benny Medina's birthday party. He was managing like J Lo and a bunch of people. You know, yeah. he's, you know Benny Medina is like huge executive right and puffy was one of the people throwing the party okay so the whole night puffy's in the booth with me going through my crates handing me records play this <laughs> and he's on the mic like yo where's your bad boy where's your bad boy's uh crate and i'm like there it is and he's like pulling out all the bad boy records he's like put this on and he's announcing it oh before it comes on it was the craziest night like he's like take that take that yeah exactly exactly <laughs> you're like say it on the and mic you're what you're you're watching j lo and will smith you know he's managing all these you know it's like the a list of hollywood at that yeah. point you know what i mean and i'm djing this part i'm like i don't even know how i got this gig it was just right. like you know what i mean but um and one other one i had to dj for I had to DJ at Unity, um, Big B, who's Chase's cousin. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace. Used to throw this this um, this event called Unity. Right. And he, you know, he had Jay Z, Biggie. He's had everybody from the yeah. East Coast. You know what I mean? And he had, I think it was a Wu Tang and hieroglyphic show and oh my god, whatever. It was it was crazy. And for some reason, they didn't have a DJ for Wu Tang, so I had to like. Like RZA couldn't be there at a certain or something. Something weird happened. I had right. to, I had to like DJ for them. Crazy, and it was just the craziest moment. I'm watching them perform, and you know what? It was just it was crazy. You know what I mean? But then yeah. RZA showed up, and he's you know he's like, no, you got it, you got it, you're good. <laughs> you know, play this. What? It was just it was nuts, man. It was That's crazy. so dope. So, do you DJ at all now? Like I know you said you stopped, but I mean, no, I do, I do. <laughs> I mean, I I practice every day. Like so before I I make music I, I i just for 20 minutes no headphones i'll just i'll just spin really yeah so every time before i like scratching or mixing or whatever both. you feel I mean, like all doing. of it like i'll you know i'm just i like, love that i always say to people like go back to the reason why you started yeah and, like if you're ever out of it or anything it'll like center you back to like it'll make you remember why you started why doing i love it, it and put you in a good mood yeah and then like so that that's my routine is like i'll spin for just 20 minutes like i'll, I'll after 20 minutes it's like I'll a pre-workout <laughs> exactly you know what i mean that's it's like dope. stretching or whatever and and i just got back into it and you know props to jazzy jeff because when when i started he invited me to the playlist retreat right and that like like that ignited like the DJ inside of me like to come out because I'm watching Scratch Bastard, I'm watching everybody, all yeah. my favorite DJs, ever, ever, yeah, in one place <laughs> watching them spin like so dope, and I'm watching them like okay, I gotta, I gotta get back into this, right? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like these dudes are killing it, they're killing it. You know it's what I mean? Crazy and the creativity, yeah, yeah. So you know the playlist retreat like reignited like my love for DJing. You know what I mean? And I think that's actually Help me 
with my production. You know what I mean? So like, dope. So I, I oh, love that's it. great. That's what it's for too. I mean, that's yeah. why Jazzy Jeff does that. You know, Dude, it's 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 the most incredible experience like ever, man. I I think I went like four years in a row, and like the last one had Daylight was there, and like you oh, know, man. just to see them and what they're what they've gone through and right the ups and downs. But like you yeah. know, and Macy O is such an ill DJ. He's you know ill. I mean? He's I mean, it's one of the best live shows I've ever seen with Daylight. Soul. I've seen it. A hundred million times. I don't know how many times. Anywhere I could see them live, I would go. And from high school to college to L.A., San Francisco, anywhere I was. And Maceo was such a huge mm. part of their show. And I remember they would do this one thing. I saw him in San Francisco, and he would do this thing like, we're bringing it back to the old school. He would keep looping in this one record, but then he'd have a stack of records, like a pancake of old school beats, and they would rap over each one. And this is all vinyl, and it was just like my mind was blown. It was probably like the late 90s, and I'm just like, okay. Like, I had just started DJing, and I'm like, I need to, like, understand how he's doing this. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just to see how the DJ was such a big part of the show and making the show so fun and making it all come together, but then the MCs were working with him. It was just like incredible, man. the best. Yeah, they're you know? incredible. They're, like, literally the essence of – Hip hop, period. I know. You know what I mean? And they like, really are. They really are my. So like, to I've had them on all the time lately too, because been streaming. You yeah, know, they're all, back. So I'm just like, here we go. All my favorite albums. Like, and you know, I forgot how much Maceo rapped on a lot of the records. Me too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, damn, Maceo was like really the yeah. third member, like third rapper of the group. Like, he yeah. was really, you know, which you know, it's there, there's you know, they're they're you know, that's one of my favorite groups of all. Yeah, time. and even skits. Like, I was playing it for my son, and he's like. He's like, why do they have these, you know, 45-minute songs where they're just talking and saying weird <laughs> sounds? Right. And I was like, well, because back in the day, you just made an album for fun. You yeah. know, I was like, you didn't think about, like, the streaming track and exactly. if it was going to get, you know, streams and right. the thing. I go, you just, you're making a movie, right, you know? Right, right. It was, like, so funny because it's just like you... I don't know. You wouldn't think to do that now, yeah. you know, or it yeah. would be the record label will tell you to make it part of the song for it's the like, streaming. Or it's something. like the attention span too, right? It's like, yeah. are people going to invest that amount of time to listen right. to a record? You know what I mean? Yeah. But like back then, that was everything. Everything. You yeah. were immersed in it. You know what I mean? So yeah. Like, you know, when when that catalog hit streaming, it was just like, man, like it was like my childhood all over again. Yeah. You know Me too. I know. I've still been going through them. Like I, st I just keep listening to Balloon Mindset like Dude, over and that over. That record <laughs> aged really well, like, like crazy. Like, like I on didn't some really fine get it. wine. Like yeah, the best bottle of wine you could ever have in your collection. It's crazy. All the beats, like everything, sounds so good. What they're talking about, the how they incorporated, you know, Fred Wesley and yeah. and like you know the live instrumentation, the Japanese rappers, even that part. It's way ahead. I was listening that, to. It, I'm you know? like. It's like those dudes, like when it came out, there were so many, you know, it was like everything has shifted away from that. Yeah. So I really didn't take it in like, you know, like I was like. Yeah, it was, it, we almost it was took it for granted. It exactly. was just like, okay, this is dope, it's but dope. there's so much dope stuff coming yeah. out. It was insane. So it got kind of like yeah. swept under the rug in a way, but now it's like, yo. It's like it's more meaningful. One of my favorite albums. By yeah. Because the two albums before were like a movie, like we were saying, a skit and funny yeah. and fun and lighthearted mixed with, I mean, it was them as a whole, but yeah. that was just a different evolution. Different, yeah, and and I don't know, maybe what did Prince Paul not do all the beats on that? Like, yeah, I, I wonder that if that's why it sounds yeah. different. Yeah. Not that it's good or bad. Like, I mean, I love all the Prince Paul yeah. stuff too as well, but I feel like maybe that, I don't know. There's something different about it. And, um, I love it, man. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it, it aged really, I know. Thankfully, I somehow, like when Serato came out, I had all the CDs and I had a CD drive and I imported all yeah. of them at the time. So I was like, okay, I got yeah, it in my yeah, exactly. Serato for this whole time. But yeah. But it's still uh, dope to like ride in your car and listen to it. Yes, movie. totally. Um, well, I know we got to get out of here soon. There's yeah. a couple things I just want to talk about. Um, uh -huh. The future of sampling thing that you yeah. were doing with Timbaland. Um, what is that? <laughs> Can you just yeah. it? Yeah, um, it was just, it, it was something that we did live. I mean, it was, it was like on, um, I think it was like over like a private Zoom link, but it was really okay. just talking about the evolution of sampling and where we are now and like where we started, you know what I mean? Because like, okay. you know, we started, we were both ASR10 guys. Right. You know what I mean? And he's kind of like one of the masters, if not the master of the ASR10. Right. Um, you know, and he talked about his evolution to coming to, 
Serato stems, which is kind of like the whole point of it was to see like the future of sampling and where it's where 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 we are now. Yeah, which is like kind of we can't really believe it. Like we're still trying to process where we are now. Right. But you know how how much we had to work back then to like yeah. find a break and chop the you know chop right. the drums. Now it's all given to you, right? It's like yeah. you know we you know but but we you know you have to embrace it. You got to embrace yeah. the technology, and I think that's what we talked about was like you know embracing the technology and where we are now and like and using it to make better music you know that's what i mean dope. like and i feel like there's some kid that's looking at it a whole different way that's gonna make that's gonna change everything yep. you know what i mean of it's course. not gonna be from us it's gonna be from some kid who's gonna pick it up and be like oh i'm gonna use it like this and we're not even gonna see that coming you know what i mean yeah. so i think that's that was what that was about and then we you know and just with serato you know we we just you know had other e events and stuff like right. that just you know interviewing and podcasts and stuff like that it was really dope you know yeah just to talk about you know our journey and right this, so. what, what um so like we talked about it in the beginning but with serato studio you know i'm i'm super familiar with serato dj and i've been using stems nonstop, yeah. and i love it and i'm teaching other people about it and yeah. i was telling you earlier ways i've been using it and um yeah. but serato studio i've been um trying to learn but I kind of get to a point where I do a little bit in it and then I transfer over to Ableton. Yeah. But I know I can do it in Serato Studio. Like, how do you make a beat, like, from the beginning to end in there, <laughs> like, in the Rhythm Roulette or something? Like, like I mean, it's, it, you know, the thing about Rhythm Roulette is, like, I'm still learning it. Right. So it's, like, it's all new. It just came out. So I, right. I've used Serato Studio before, but it's, like, even with this new feature, it's still a lot to take in right so and the way i produce in ableton or reason or whatever is like yeah. I'm, I'm heavy on sound design and like right. i haven't figured that out in serato studio yet but right so maybe you can use it in conjunction with the with things something you're used else to. Yeah. yeah so but you know i mean it's just trial and error you know what i mean right. it's like you just got to keep making stuff until you're like okay i'm comfortable enough to like finish a beat in here you know what i mean yeah I'm not using because I use a lot of live instruments. I haven't done that in Serato Studio. Right. Um, that's like kind of like the next thing. If see if I, if that worked, you know, yeah. if if I could work that way. But I mean, in terms of finishing it, I mean, it was work to get to that point. You know right. what I mean? It's just like you know, you just like learn anything else new. It's like yeah, you just gotta keep trying it until you're like, oh, you know, you make that one thing. Like, like when I first got on Reason, I was like, this is really dope. I love it. I wasn't making anything dope on it. And then that one day when I made something dope, I was like, I got it. Right. I'm on this from now on. Yeah. That was it. You know what I mean? So you just got to get to a point where you're like, okay, I made something dope. I can actually function in this yeah. and make something incredible. It's, it's not too hard. They give you a lot. Right. <laughs> they give you everything. So. Yeah. No, but that leads it. I mean, that, that goes back to what we were saying. We we're just the journey all about just doing something to do it. And then something yeah. comes out of it. It's like learning to scratch and you're like, Oh, I finally did it. Yeah. There we go. So I finally made the dope beat in that program or learned how to do this thing. Yeah. And it's you just, have to be bad before you're good, you know, yeah. and just keep working through it. Yeah. I just call it graduating, man. Like, yeah. I think you go through, you know, you, you find a new challenge, you, you know, you figure it out, you graduate. That's now cool it's, now it's the next it. thing. And you're you never next. stop. It's like, there's no, there's no destination. You just keep graduating and right. and then you're done. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. That's so, with music. There's no destination at all. Yeah, you're there's just, no destination. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then, all right, there's a couple of questions from the internet, and then let's okay. get out of here and go pick up our kids uh, yeah. from school. Uh, someone, so you did the, like we mentioned a little bit, you did the collaboration with Native Instruments. You have your own packs for yeah. machine yeah, and for, for machine. Yeah. Uh, you know, all that stuff. So someone asked if you actually used the sounds that you made. Oh, yeah. I okay. used all those sounds. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was, I was like, that was in my template, my Ab Ableton template for like a while i change it every six months but right. that was like my main two oh, dope. Like sounds especially for layering like if you have my expansion like it's great to use the sounds but it's also great to use those as layering you know what i mean like yeah the snares all that stuff it's it's really made for that as well so right so that that's kind of like if i have like a superpower it is like sound design like yeah. i can i can listen to a record and i can I'll be, oh, I can remake that. I can make all the sounds on that record right, right now. You give me a synth, I can program it. You Crazy. give me, you know what I mean? Yeah. You need that texture, I can figure that out. You right. know, that's why I do a lot of, I do tons of replays for people. Like, 
you know, um, Johnny P's caddy for um, Benny the Butcher and J. Cole. Oh, wow. I, I made, you know, that sample, I made that sample, you know what I mean? Which was, it's not a replay, but it was a reimagined thing okay. that they had, you know, from yeah. the original that they had. So, you know, but when Alchemist heard, he's like, damn, this is like the same vibe, but it's yeah. different music, you know what I mean? So, oh, that's you know, so that's, that, that's, you know, so yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I mean, I use... That's great. Everything. Yeah, yeah. It was so cool when I heard you were doing that with Native Instruments because I was saying some of my best friends, Justin, Bandy, and D Justin Adams DNA, yeah. like they both work there, and and I grew up, you know, with Justin Bandy, same thing, like making beats, and he was, I was looked up to him as, you know, he would make the dopest beats and could redo things and yeah. knew how to do it, and is into sound design, you know. So to hear all you guys are working together, I'm like, oh, it's such a great combination, yeah. and yeah, what man. came out of it was no, so it was dope. incredible. It was, yeah. It was incredible. Um, all right, one more question. Jen Rosero, she's always supporting and writing in. Thank you. She asked, I don't know if you have an answer, but what band could you listen to forever? I what guess band? Group. It's funny. I was just talking to um, talking to somebody about this. Like, you know, we're just, I was just talking about Stevie Wonder. Yeah. And, you know, like the mountaintop of music, right? Yeah. And, and the I feel like the group that always kind of gets, like, it's they're underrated for whatever reason is Earth, Wind & Fire. I could listen to Earth, Wind & Fire forever. True. They're and like and the you greatest. could un you could unearth you know but you could unearth yeah. like so many gems from them you're like oh I forgot about this song I didn't even know about this or. it's so many like you know if you go into their their albums it's yeah. just like man you, you you forget like the level of excellence with that group and album after album is crazy so yeah and talk about music holding up well come on how does it sound that good it's Still, ridiculous I can play it up against any Anything. song. Anything like, Anything. and it sounds perfect when I play anywhere I play it. And they they're kind of forgotten about. They don't yeah. they don't come up in conversation, which is kind of crazy to me. So I would say Earth Wind and Fire. Probably. Okay, good one. Yeah. All right, I think that's a good uh, note to end on yeah. right there. <laughs> Earth Wind and Fire. Go yeah. listen to their whole catalog and De La Soul and Self yes. Scientific. Yes. <laughs> Find those DJ Khalil playlists <laughs> that people have made. But yeah, thank you so much for coming on, Thanks man. This was me. like this was such a great conversation. Um, I loved it. Hopefully everyone else did. And, um, yeah, everybody can find you online. Just DJ Khalil uh, yeah. on all platforms, on right? All platform, yeah. Totally. And uh, check that Rhythm Roulette just came out. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to promote or shout out or talk about? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm just, just glad to be here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just, you know, Gratitude. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> like appreciate you, you having me. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for all you've done, you know, for the culture and just for music yeah. as a whole. And, um, yeah, it's an honor to have you on. So thank you, man. See you Appreciate soon. It. All, all right. right. Peace. All right,